In this lesson, we'll be discussing heat calculations by combining a few concepts we've learned so far, namely heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. The question reads, Charles has increased his activity by doing more exercise. After a session of using small weights, he has a sore arm. An ice bag is filled with 125 grams of ice that is 0, 0.0 degrees Celsius. The heat of fusion for ice is 334 joules per gram, and that's conveniently written underneath here. How much heat in kilojoules is absorbed to melt the ice and to raise the temperature of water to body temperature, which is 37.0 degrees Celsius? So think about this for a second. We have a bag of ice. Because it's touching this person's arm, which is presumably around body temperature, 37 degrees, the ice melts. And eventually, the body continues to generate heat and the ice bag, which is now melted water, will also rise in temperature, eventually reaching 37.0 degrees Celsius. The first thing that I want to do is find out how much energy is required to take 125 grams of ice into liquid. And for that, we'll be using heat of fusion, which is the constant for solid to liquid. So I'll take this number, 125 grams of ice, I'll write down H2O for convenience, and multiply that by this conversion ratio. I'll make sure that one gram is at the bottom, one gram of H2O, and at the top, 334 joules. Notice what happens. This unit and this unit will completely cancel out, leaving us with the amount of joules. So 125 times 334, that gives us 41,750. Now, I don't want to round anything just yet because there's more calculations to come. I'll write down 41750 joules. And remember, this is three significant figures. A good way to keep track is just to put a dot underneath the last significant figure. So that's the amount of joules required to go from solid to liquid. Now we want to know how much energy is required to raise this to 37.0 degrees Celsius. For that, we'll be using the specific heat capacity of water, this number. And if you don't know, specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a substance per unit of mass. And now notice that the units are joules per gram times degrees Celsius. We have the mass of this liquid, it's 125, and that doesn't change because it's a closed system, it's inside a bag. So I'll take this number of 125 grams and multiply it carefully to this number, because by multiplying it directly to the way this number is written, watch, 4.184 joules per every one gram times degrees Celsius. This unit will cancel out with that unit, and now we're left with a number, if we stop calculating, we'll be left with a number that's in joules per degree Celsius. Now we know that the body reaches 37 degrees, as evident in the question, so I'll multiply this now by 37.0 degrees, and that's in Celsius, and by doing this, this unit and this unit will cancel out, giving us the amount of joules needed to raise from 0 to 37. So let's go ahead and calculate this and we'll interpret what's happening in a moment. So 125 times 4.184 and multiply this now by 37.0. This number should be to three significant figures. I'll write down everything, 19351 joules, and I'll place a dot right there signifying the last significant digit. So this is the amount of energy needed to raise to 37.0, and this is the amount of energy needed to overcome going from solid to liquid. And so we will now add this number and this number. And remember the amount of significant figures. So this was 41.8, I'm rounding now, and this is 19.4, and both of these are in kilojoules. Just assume that we divided both of them by 1,000, and that's how you go from joules to kilojoules. 41.8 plus 19.4 gives us 61.2. 61.2 kilojoules of energy is required for all of this to happen. Now if you'd like the answer to question number two, we'll be discussing it in question two of this series, so make sure that you watch that and we'll hope to see you soon.